Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. What are you expected to do in the event of a drone incident or a crash? And when do you have to report it? Good questions. Let's find out. Regulation 901.49 states that you must immediately stop your drone operation, investigate what the heck happened, and take appropriate corrective actions if any of these things occur. Number one, if somebody requires medical attention. Number two, even if they don't require medical attention, if you hit somebody with your drone. Number three, if you accidentally damage your drone or the controller such that it no longer flies properly. Anytime your drone flies too far or too high, or if you have a collision with another aircraft, or even if it was a close call. And anytime the drone becomes uncontrollable, has a flyaway, or goes missing. And finally, if the police get called, or if there's a KDOR, which is a Civil Aviation Daily Occurrence Report, and it has been issued. In any of these cases, you must stop, investigate, which means you need to investigate, and take corrective action. But note that most of these types of incidents do not require you to engage the Transportation Safety Board, the official organization that investigates and reports upon aviation incidents and accidents in Canada. So when do you have to report a drone incident to the Transportation Safety Board? Well, that's actually a really good question. In the October 8th, 2020 edition of the AIM, it states three types of cases when you need to report to the TSB. One, if someone is killed or seriously injured. Well, this makes complete sense. And by the way, there is a definition of seriously injured. Basically means if you've fractured a limb, major lacerations, serious burns, or any injury requiring hospitalization. The second type of case is if the drone sustains structural damage. What? <laughs> if I crash my Mavic into a tree and break a strut, I have to report it to the TSB? They can't be serious. Number three, if the drone is missing or inaccessible. Again, really? I lose my drone in the lake and I have to report to the TSB as well as to my wife? Well, this makes no sense. These criteria appear to have been derived from the non-drone, the manned aircraft, part of the AIM. And it makes sense there. Of course you want an investigation if there's structural damage to a manned aircraft or a plane goes missing. Well, to add to the strangeness here, on October the 30th, three weeks after this AIM revision was issued, Transport Canada sent out one of their regular drone zones newsletters. I'll put a link in the in the description. And it said something completely different than the AIM, but much more sensible. Number one, you need to report a drone incident to the TSB if the drone was over 25 kilograms. Well, that makes sense. A huge drone, for sure. Or, number two, if a person was killed or sustained a serious injury. Again, this makes complete sense. And number three, if you crash your drone, regardless of the size of the drone, into a manned aircraft. And that also makes sense. And by the way, this means that if you crash a Mavic Mini or any other sub 250 gram drone with a, a manned aircraft, you do have to report it. I've followed up by calling the Transportation Safety Board and have confirmed that, yeah, these three criteria are the ones that apply to drones, not what's in the AIM RPA chapter. By the way, the regulations state that you must report an incident like one of these ones as soon as possible and by the quickest means available with whatever you know at the time. Now, you, you must then follow up with any remaining information within 30 days. Which raises an interesting question. How many incidents infol involving drones has the TSB actually investigated? Well, this required a bit of digging, but the TSB guys were really helpful. Just to set the context, 
the TSB investigates about a thousand aviation incidents of all kinds in a typical year. Not surprisingly, 2020 isn't typical, with only 587 up until the end of October. So probably around 700 expected for the full year. Of these, only a small percentage end up warranting a formal public report. The focus of the TSB is identifying areas to improve safety, and as such, they use their own judgment in determining which incidents require spending time and money on a full report. Drone-related reports are a very tiny percentage of these occurrences, with an average of two per year since 2010. By the way, the TSB gets involved in only a fraction of the drone-related KDOR reports, the initial unsubstantiated sightings we often see in the media. There have been 22 drone-related TSB occurrence reports since 2010, with only one warranting a public report. Let's have a quick look at that one report and the two reported in 2020. This is the report summary for the incident that took place in 2017. This two-engine Beechcraft passenger plane was approaching Jean Lesage Airport in Quebec. They were at 1,500 feet AGL in Class C airspace and on final approach to land. The crew suddenly observed a drone, described as being about the size of a dinner plate, in their path, and a split second later, they hit it with their left wing. They saw the drone disintegrate, they declared an emergency, and landed without incident. Fortunately, there were no injuries, and damage to the plane was limited to a small dent and a few scratches, as you can see here. The next two events were both in 2020. The first one occurred during a pipeline protest intervention by the RCMP in British Columbia. The RCMP were operating two drones for surveillance of the protest. An RCMP helicopter flying below 300 feet above ground level entered the area and collided with one of the drones, a 2.5 kilogram FLIR, I don't know if you pronounce that flyer or FLIR, Sky Ranger R60. The helicopter pilot felt the impact and landed nearby as a precautionary measure. The damage to the helicopter was sufficient to require an airlift out of the area. The drone was destroyed. There were no injuries. The second event in 2020 took place in Calgary during a test flight of a prototype 40 kilogram Fulcrum Air E7500 drone designed for heavy cargo transportation. After three successful test flights, the drone behaved erratically. On the fourth flight, the pilot had to take emergency corrective actions that resulted in a hard landing and significant damage to the drone. There were no injuries. All three of these incidents meet the criteria for a report to the Transportation Safety Board. Interesting stuff to read if you're curious. I'll put the links in the description below. Well, there we have it. What you should do in the event of an incident with your drone and the three kinds of accidents that require you to report to the Transportation Safety Board. I hope you have found this video interesting and informative. Thanks for watching.